Investing in a smart lock is a great way to add security to your house. You can give access to different people without actually giving them a physical key, and then you can monitor who is coming and going in the app. In this video today, we're gonna be talking about the Yale Assure Lock 2. We're gonna go over its features, what it offers, go over the install because it is super easy to do, and what the experience is like actually using this. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. So last year we tried out the Yale Assure Lock first generation. Now we're taking a look at the second one here. I would say that first generation was probably one of my favorite smart locks out there, but they've upgraded it. It looks a little bit different. It's smaller, it's newer, but I will say it does have some drawbacks and we'll be covering that a little bit later. First, what I wanna do is I want to go over some of the features that this lock offers. Now I do wanna mention that I did reach out to Yale and ask them to send me out this lock. They're not paying for this video. They're not sponsoring it, nothing. They did send this lock out to me though. So I do wanna let you guys know that. But if we take a look at the lock here, I did get the Wi-Fi version. The reason for the Wi-Fi version is because it's going to work with a lot more smart home ecosystems. Now the one drawback to that is that it's going to affect the battery life. Now the battery life on this lock right here is going to be about three months and then you have to replace the batteries. So what I would recommend doing is picking up some rechargeable batteries. I use these rechargeable batteries here from Amazon. I've been using them for years now and I actually currently have them in my old smart lock and I'm definitely going to be putting them into this smart lock. It's nice to be able to just recharge those batteries instead of having to throw away new batteries every three months. But looking on this one right here, because we have Wi-Fi, it's gonna support Google Home, Amazon Alexa, and Apple's HomeKit. Some of the features that this offers right here is that we've got auto unlock. So as you're walking up to your front door, it's gonna use Bluetooth to automatically unlock that front door for you. We've got keypad access. You've got the ability to access it through the app. Even your Apple Watch is going to be able to unlock the door for you, which is pretty cool. We've also got the backup key. So it does come with a key, so that way you can get in if you want to. Now, if you don't wanna use the key, I did get the one that has the key with it. You can get one that does not have a key entry, but I like the extra security of being able to carry a key. Worst case scenario, if it stops working or the battery goes out or something like that. Now looking at the back of the box, we have got auto lock with door sensor. So it does come with a door sensor that can automatically lock this lock for you. Because it is Wi-Fi, the Yale app can access this lock at any time, which is why I like having the Wi-Fi version. Never had a key, you can create custom codes that can go to family and friends, and you can also schedule those codes. Say you have a dog walker or cleaning lady that comes on a certain day at a certain time, you can just give access to that code to only work during those certain days and times. You can also use that maybe if your property is an Airbnb where you have people constantly coming and going. Now I mentioned security you can trust and easy install. We'll go through the install so you guys can check that out. Speaking of that, I am gonna have chapters down below so you guys can skip around or ahead. If you don't wanna watch that, you can go ahead and just skip forward. It does come in these three colors here. We've got black, bronze, and satin nickel. They did send out the black one for me, so that's gonna be the one that we are installing. Okay, so here's everything we get in the box. We've got our quick start guide right here. We have got our manual for setup and all that kind of stuff. Very detailed instructions in there. We've got the interior side of the door, so this is going to pop open right here. We're gonna put our batteries in there, and this is also where our module is gonna go. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Next up, we have got the interior plate right here. This is what this is going to snap onto. We've got the deadbolt, we've got the exterior. Now I got the one with the key on it. You can see right here, it's a little bit longer, but that is what it looks like on the other side right there. We've also got our batteries. We've got our multiple size screws, depending on the size door that you have. These are gonna be extra long screws for this strike plate. So if you do need to replace your strike plate, they're gonna have extra long screws for you to put in if you need to do that. Otherwise, you could just reuse the screws that you have or there's some black screws in here. We have got our door sensor right there, so that's gonna tell if the door is open and closed. We've got our reset key right here if you need to reset anything or take off this interior side off this plate. You're gonna use this piece right here. We've also got a key, and then we have got our smart module. So I went with the Wi-Fi one. It's gonna be different depending on the style that you get. Now setting up this lock is pretty easy to do, assuming that you have the right dimensions. Now inside of the manual, it does give you a template so you can measure to make sure everything lines up correctly. I will say this, I tried to install this lock at my front door, and my dimensions did not match. It was slightly off, which caused me to not be able to install 
this lock. Now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and carve out a little bit where the deadbolt would go to kind of sink it in a little bit more. But because I test out so many different locks and all the other locks seem to work okay, I didn't want to do that. Instead, what I did is I installed it on my garage door. So taking off my old lock was pretty easy to do. All I have to do is undo two screws, the lock comes apart, and then from there I remove two more screws to remove the old deadbolt. Now I'm going to take the new Yale deadbolt and install that. Now because of the length of the old screws, I just reused those instead of using the black ones because the black ones were either too short or just way too long. So I ended up just reusing the old deadbolt screws. Once I had that installed, I went ahead and I put the outside portion of the door, the number pad part. I inserted that into the front of the door and had the cable come through on the other end. And then on the inside of the door, I installed the mounting plate. It only took two screws to lock those two devices together. And then from there, I went ahead and I installed the interior portion of the lock. I connected the cable, pushed the lock into place, and then screwed in the two screws, which are going to be inside of the battery compartment. So make sure you're screwing those down before you insert your batteries. Once those were tightened down, I inserted my Wi-Fi module on the top of the device. Now that that is installed, I insert the batteries and power it on. So assuming you don't run into any issues, it's that easy to install. It's really just four screws that you're gonna be screwing together. Two for the deadbolt and then two for the lock. All right, so now that I've got everything installed downstairs, I'm gonna go ahead and go through the setup process. Now I need to create an account and log into that, which I've done, and then I need to add a device. It's pretty easy to just follow all the prompts on the screen. I'm gonna go through, I didn't tell you how to insert that module, whether you have Wi-Fi or Zigbee or Z-Wave or whichever one you went with. It's gonna make a connection via Bluetooth for you to set that up. And then depending on how you're connecting it, for me it's Wi-Fi, it went ahead and it connected itself to my Wi-Fi. I had to put in my Wi-Fi name and password and then it got connected. And now anytime I leave the house, I can still have access to controlling that lock. Okay, now that I've got my lock set up and installed, we can see right now it is unlocked. All I have to do is tap on the green circle in the middle discovered, locked, and now the door is locked. I can go ahead and tap on the circle again and it will unlock the door for me. Now, down below that, we've got some more options here. So we've got our activity. This is going to tell us everything that's been happening with the lock. If you create different user accounts, maybe you have parents or grandparents or siblings or just family members, you can go ahead and set them up under the user profile. So we've got our user profile right here. And then up above where it says invites, I can go ahead and tap on invites. I can give them two different types of access. I can give them app access, meaning they would need to install this app and create an account. But then all they need to do is use their phone to do the locking and unlocking. If they don't wanna do that or they're not comfortable or don't wanna install the app, I can just give them an access code. So they can walk up to the door, enter in that access code to be able to get themselves in. So we got our two different options right there. If we set up a personal entry code, we can also set up a schedule to go along with it. So with that, I can say, this person's code has access Mondays and Wednesdays from 11 to 12. And then every time that person comes in the door, I can also have alert notifying me when that person has arrived. So if we go back here and go into our activity, it will display that person there. It'll show how they logged in, whether it's through the app or their code, so you can keep track of everything through there. Very handy if you're using this in an Airbnb so you know if the person got in or not. Now, if we take a look down here at the settings, we have a few different settings that we could take a look at. So we've got this one for smart lock. So if I tap on here, these are all the different settings. You can name your device. I've got mine set to garage door. We've got other options here. So we've got different security options. We can hide our entry codes. We can also set up verified access. So if somebody's using the app, they'll need to verify their access, whether that's through a fingerprint scanner or face ID or something like that. If we go down below here, we've got a bunch of different, say automations, advanced settings. All of these though, you have to be within Bluetooth range. So as of right now, where I'm sitting here in the office, I don't have Bluetooth access to that door. So right now everything is grayed out. Now I did get within Bluetooth range of the door so we can see some of the settings right here. This is what device settings offers. It allows us to adjust the volume and then also the indicator light on here. Next up we have the keypad settings. So we have a few different options in here. 
One is going to be the keypad security. So keypad security is going to allow us to have shutdown times and then also wrong code limits. So you can go ahead and change those within the settings right there. As far as operating mode, we've got the operating mode of normal or vacation. So you can put this into vacation mode if you would like to do that. Next up here, we have auto unlock. So if you do wanna set up auto unlock, you do have to enable location tracking on your phone. It's gonna then track your phone and as you leave the house, it'll put you in away mode. And when you get back to the house, Within range, it'll go ahead and put you in home mode and then unlock the door for you. Next up, we also have auto lock. Now with auto lock here, you can set the timing for the auto unlock anywhere from 10 seconds all the way up to 30 minutes before your door will automatically lock for you. Now I've been using this lock for about a week now and so far I love it. When you are leaving the house, if you hit the Yale button on the top, it will automatically lock the door. To unlock the door, if you don't have auto unlock on, you need to either push the Yale button on the top or put three fingers on the screen to bring up the pad. From there, you're gonna put in your code and then hit the check mark on the bottom to be able to unlock the door. Now, comparing this lock to the original Assure lock, I actually like this one better. I like that it's lower profile. I like that it's a little bit smaller. I like the keypad on it more too. It's a little bit more responsive. I like that the numbers stick out. I like that they actually glow too. So that way, you know, if it's dark outside and you go and you hit that pad, it will bring up all the numbers on there for you to easily see and enter in the code that you need to. All in all, I think this is a good lock. However, my one big complaint with this lock is that the batteries only last three months. This is due to the fact that Wi-Fi is built into this thing. Instead of having a module off to the side, it's actually going to be built into the device and that is really going to drain on the battery life. So do keep that in mind. Like I said earlier in the video, I recommend picking up some rechargeable batteries if you plan on going down this route so that we could just recharge those up, get them back in the lock and be on your way and not have to throw away so many batteries. Anyway, what do you guys think of this lock? Is this something that you are going to be picking up? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. As always, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you guys in the next video.